Uh, Maya's still in detention. I gotta see if the detective can help speed up her release. Hey! Detective Gumshoe! Hey, pal. Uh, the trial today, uh, uh, that woman really took us for a ride, didn't she? Uh, claiming she was witness to a moiter and all. Still, if it weren't for her photograph, Mr. Edgeworth wouldn't have made it today. I don't care who you are! No one can tell me that's Mr. Edgeworth! I mean, come on! It doesn't look like him at all! But Edgeworth has admitted he was on the boat. And he's the one being shot, then! He seemed fine in court today. Uh, details, pal! Details! Uh, whose side are you on, anyway? All I'm saying is we have to respect the evidence. That reminds me. I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. Yeah, what's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I never heard anything about that. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does, him becoming a prosecuting attorney, and him being scared of earthquakes. It all started with that incident. The Deal 6 incident? Yep, that's the one. Fifteen years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. Listen, pal, we can't stand here talking about some old unsolved case. Uh, we need to focus on the specifics of this one. Uh, I guess you're right. Now, she hoiked two gunshots, right? But according to the analysis of the murder weapon, it was fired three times. Which begs the question, where was the third shot fired? Uh, maybe it was a practice shot or something? I guess that line of questioning isn't going to get us anywhere fast. Hey, do you have any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? It sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Right. He said something about that in the trial today. Do you happen to know who the other witness is? S uh, sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. It was worth a shot. <sighs> There's a lot more I need to ask him, but I should try to get some help with Maya's situation before I do anything else. Detective, I actually came here looking for you because I wanted to talk to you about Maya Faye. Is there any way you could speed up her bail process? Huh? She's not on bail yet. Uh, that's strange. I told them to let her go as soon as they had their report written up. Uh, man, I don't know what would have happened in the courtroom today if it weren't for her. Uh, I see her get dragged out by the bailiff. I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Mr. Edgeworth was so moved I saw his lip trembling. Really? Cold as ice Edgeworth? Uh, he was really grateful for what she did, you know? Uh, tell you what, I'll get the report on Maya done, so you can get her out of there as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, do you happen to know how much her bail's going to cost? Hey, don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. What? Edgeworth? I told you, he's grateful to her for what she did. All right, pal, I'll get this report where it needs to go. Just don't forget to go pick her up, okay? I'll head over to the detention center now, and swing back by when she's out. There's still a lot I need to ask you. Thanks again, Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. See you soon. Hmm, maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. Maya! Hey! Nick, it's you! I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day, okay? It's a relief. Why do you do that anyway? I don't know. I... just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, wow, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? <laughs> no promises. <laughs> Free at last, huh? Those interrogators were really mean. They were like, okay, what did you do this time? Like I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Thanks for bail, Nick. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. Then let's get going. We've got a lot to look into before tomorrow. Right behind you. Hey, there's the hero! I have a seat, pal! I'm here for you if you need anything. Uh, uh, besides money, that is. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe! I didn't think to ask earlier, but how is the investigation proceeding? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's not, really. 
We have another meeting coming up where we're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident, and the guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case, Robert Hammond. They're saying that's why Edgeworth shot him. Edgeworth never talks about his past, so I bet they'll drag that out and hit him with it in court tomorrow. Poor Edgeworth. I gotta admit, it doesn't look good, pal. At least that witness's Gordy obsession bought us another day to investigate. Hey, uh, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gordy? The monster down at Gord Lake? Uh, not poisonly, no. Do you think we might find him while we're down at the lake today? Huh? Are you out of your minds? You, you think you'll have time to go wild monster hunting? How about you focus on doing some real detective work instead? Maybe because we're not detectives and you are? Detective Gumshoe is scaring me, Nick. Tell you what, since I'm gonna be stuck in meetings for the rest of the day, I'll loan you one of the newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take whichever one you like. Okay, give us the goods. Eh, hold on now, everything in due time. Voiced, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, Missile. M missile yeah, he's a canine police dog still in training. Missile! Missile! Here, yeah, boy! <laughs> Here he is! <gasps> hey, he's cute! Look, Nick! Cute dog! A cute dog. And this will help us... how? <laughs> Next, secret weapon number two, a fishing pole. Here, this is my own poisonal pole. Detective Gumshoe, we're going to be looking for evidence. Yeah? What kind of evidence are we supposed to find with a fishing pole? Hey, you never know till you look, pal. <sighs> okay, this next one is the last one. No, please, I'm already overwhelmed by our choices. Secret weapon number three, a metal detector. That's actually more practical than I expected. Well, which will it be? Um, I can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. Right. All of them were just so... Great. Might as well go with the most practical. Can we borrow that metal detector? It's sure thing, pal! Thanks, Detective. I'm sure we'll find... some kind of use for it. Come on, Nick! I want to put our new secret weapon to the test! Looks like Gumshoe's hard sell worked on someone, though. Good luck! And let me know if you find anything important! cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct working up the case against Edgeworth. Hey, y'all! Hey, it's Lotta! Y'all really did it today. Well, what did we do now? No, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realize that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility, but I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. So, you see, I want to make it up to y'all. What do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see, I got a bit of information for you that Von Karma didn't want me to say nothing about. But what information? Not so fast. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Exchange? I thought this was to make it up to us. Right. I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. Ugh. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Mm. Hey, I see you thinking, my, how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, what'll it be? We gonna deal or not? What should we do, Nick? We don't have any other leads right now, so I don't think we have a choice here. Okay. How much? Huh? You completely off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gordy! But, but Gordy doesn't... I mean... Gordy might not exist. Then bring me proof that shows he don't. Uh. I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something, y'all come to me first. Got it? Oh, okay. Right. 
see y'all later. Okay, Nick, let's get hunting. Hunting? You don't seriously mean- Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? And how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist? Oh, maybe Detective Gumshoe's metal detector will help us find him. We're looking for something alive. How are we supposed to find it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. It might have been eating soda cans. Uh, let's just go. Wh what's that? It's a steel samurai, Nick! Yo! Maya! Larry? What the heck is that? Oh, it was my girl Keonce's idea. She was all like, if you like it, put this here. It would be like, really cool. Dude, she gave it to me, along with the banner and flags. Wow, that's really impressive she could find those for you. Well, she knows a lot of people, and that show's finished now, so she gets them for free. I've had that big guy for about a month, and let me tell you, it's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it there yesterday? Huh? Uh huh? Oh, right. The compressor was busted. Compressor? Yeah. It's that little unit by the hot dog stand. That's what I used to put air in the steel samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh. And here I thought you'd inflated it by yourself. It's definitely full of enough hot air. Yo, Nick! What happened with Edgeworth? Well, we made it through the first day in court, all right, but I don't know how good our prospects are from here on. Though. Hey, Larry, did you know Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Huh? That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. No? Really? Well, we were only in the same class for a year. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right. And the deal six incident happened. Larry wouldn't know anything about that, though. We've got a lot to do today, Larry. We'll see you around. Take it easy, dudes. Come back if you need a dog. Where are we headed, Nick? There's a boat rental shop further down the shoreline. We couldn't get close to it yesterday since there was such a heavy police presence around it. I don't see anyone down there now. What are we waiting for? Let's go! There's the boat rental shop. Either it's closed for the Christmas holiday, or the murder taking place on one of their boats hasn't been good for business. Boats? I've never ridden on a boat. Really? Well, how about we go out on one when the trial is finished? Hey, good idea! Hmm, but I wonder if one of these boats was used in the murder. Nick? Uh-huh? I changed my mind. I don't really want to go for a boat ride. Huh? N Nick, it's beeping! The metal detector's found something! Oh, sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Mm, fine. Nick, look! An air tank? Huh. The valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh. Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like... a string of flags. Well, we might as well take it with us now that we've found it. Good thing we don't have to go far to find its owner. What? An air tank? What about it? Larry, I want to ask you about this tank. Is this tank yours? Why would I have a thing like that? See how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. Well, must be a coincidence. Uh, there's strings of flags everywhere these days, like elementary schools and used car dealerships. Look, why would I need a tank anyway? You used this to inflate that thing, didn't you? 
Now, now, why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right, right. Actually, um, see, the compressor I used was on the fritz. So, I tried using the tank to inflate it. Just once. And, uh, it didn't go so well. It didn't go so well? Do you think it could be a little more specific? Come on, look. It's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us, tell us! Fine, whatever. It's like what I said. The compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill the samurai up with that. And then... <laughs> the valve busted open and made this incredible noise. And that tank there took off like a rocket. And took my poor deflated steel samurai with it! What? Off into Gord Lake? It sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. I wish I could have seen it. <laughs> me too. What happened next? Well, all that happened on the 20th or so. The 20th? A week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So, I went out every night in the boat looking for it. I mean, Keonse gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. Right before last was the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually... I was here on the night of the murder. But you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know about what happened? No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery at least. Huh? What mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Is it getting colder? I... I think I have to sneeze. Whoa! No, you don't! No sneezing! Achoo! I told y'all, no sneezing! See, I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. It'd trigger on one of Von Karma's finger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry's nice, but what about my film? Nick. Pay the lady. <laughs> well, Mr. Lawyer, y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me yet, or did y'all just come over here to waste more of my film? Lotta, there's no such thing as Gordy. Wh what? H how can y'all be so sure? R really, Nick? Y'all got some proof Gordy don't exist? Of course I have proof. No lawyer worth his badge would make a claim without proof to back it up. Here's the proof that Gordy doesn't exist. Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you seeing, Nick? There's a stand near here. A hot dog stand. At that stand, there's a giant inflatable steel samurai doll. About a week ago, an idiot, who happens to be a friend of mine, tried to fill it. He used this air tank, and when the valve accidentally blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently, it made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang? The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. And it just so happens that at exactly that moment, a couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Wait, so you're saying that Gordy is really the steel samurai? Well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. I'm sorry, Lotta. No, it's... It's okay. You win. I'll give you your info. Like I promised. Poor Lotta. I overheard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path here. Boat rental? There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Lotta. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick! Hold on. Something else? Yeah. The night of the murder? My camera clicked twice, you know. Wait, so you have another photo? Well, yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just the light. I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. It might not be helpful at all, but... Here, take it. Thanks, I guess. Bye now. Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave.
Poor Lada. It's all Larry's fault. <sighs> the legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry. A familiar tale to all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm, someone should whip that butts into shape. I think it's 23 years too late for that. Come on, let's go check out that boat shop again. There it is, Nick! <sighs> I can see it just fine, Maya. There still doesn't seem to be anyone around, though. Well, let's go check it out anyway! Meg? That you? Nick! Hey, is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. N Nick, you handle this. Uh, I think I'll leave this one to you, Maya. Nick! Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone. P pasta Glad to hear it, glad to hear it. You make your old man proud. When you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running? An old man like me. Bonnie! The kids are home. Hello, hello! <laughs> Nick, what was that? A parrot. The one on the perch? Keith! Y yes I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. Nick, what's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of the pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello, hello! Uh, yep. He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved? Uh, sir, could I ask you to take a look at this? <laughs> Uh, that's a lawyer's badge. Y yes it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Yep. I got you figured out now. You're not Keith! Um, sir, no, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg either. We're here investigating a murder that took place on the lake the other night. Please, help us! Um... A lawyer, huh? Please, mister. All right, I'll help. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. Okay, we promise. Nick, are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get the case solved. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Wait, didn't I just say- You too, Meg. Yes? <laughs> you bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know. Now, what was that you wanted to know? <laughs> Speak up, Polly! Hello, hello! Now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? What an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello? He ignored me! What? You forgot, Meg? Ah! You gotta call her name first! Polly! How you been? Hello, hello! See? Neat! So the parrot's name is Polly. Too bad all she can say is ah! hello. <laughs> Old Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The secret words? Hmm... Ooh! Polly! Polly! What's your name? Polly. <laughs> Cute! Maya's found a new friend. My memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. Everything important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. <laughs> All right! Hey, Polly! Watch it, will ya? <laughs> See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick! Write that number down! <laughs> hey! Don't get me involved in your little high schemes! Time to get down to business. Excuse me, sir, but did you happen to witness anything like this recently? Uh, yep. 
I seen this. You know something about this, sir? Keith. Yes? It's okay. You can call me Dad. D dad You know something about this? Uh, yep. The other night, out on the lake. Yes? Yes? I know all about that. I've seen it. What? Tell us! Tell us what you saw! Well, I suppose, since you're taking over the shop and all, I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night. Yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang! So I look outside. Then I heard another one. Bang! A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself. Yep. What did he say? Uh, hip. <laughs> I forgot. I'll remember tomorrow by court time. Promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Eh? Little Terry was just here. Terry? Yep, that kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat and got himself some whiskers growing out of his face. He must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Somehow, I don't think we're going to get much useful information out of this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh, wait, I had one more question. Polly! Polly! Have we forgotten something? What? Don't forget DL6! What? Huh? What did you just say, Nick? B one more time, Polly. What? Don't forget DL6! What? What? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister! I mean, dad! This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Maya, we need to talk. Outside. Right. Why would Polly know about DL6? We have to figure out who that old man is. Huh? What is it? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. Come on, Maya. We've got one more lead to follow up on. Hey, pal! Long time no see! Hey, oh, you don't look so happy. Uh, what's wrong this time? Actually, we wanted to ask you something. Yeah? You know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Huh? How'd you... That uh, was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, Detective? Actually, uh, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Ms. Lada Hot yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Uh, wait, what's so interesting about this guy that you had to come asking about him? The old man's parrot knew about that incident. That incident? DL6. What? His parrot said don't forget DL6. I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? If... What if the old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be? Detective Gumshoe, please, help us. We need to know about the DL6 incident. No, I... That was when Edgeworth's father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. Uh, I get you. You need information on the DL6 incident? True to air is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Alright! Way to go, Detective Gumshoe! Okay, Nick. To the records room! I guess it's time we faced Edward's past. Wow! It's amazing! Lee Dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DL6 stuff quick. 
15 years ago, both me and Edgeworth were 9 years old. We were almost through 4th grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick! I found out where the file is! Uh, oh! Thanks! Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident, and I'll get the right file. Well, first, I have to get a handle on the main facts. Like a summary. Right. Summary... Summary... Found it! Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district court. What? Is this the same district court where we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed, and all of the lights went out. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours? That would be scary like that, in the dark! There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator, and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had a shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. Do you have data on the victim? Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim... Here! Found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day's case in court, and got in the elevator with his son Miles. From the angle of the bullet, and the other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. It sounds like this current case. What's going on here? Got any data on the suspect in there? That would be the guy that my mom got arrested. This is it. The arrested suspect in DL6 incident was a man named Yanni Yogi. He was a courtroom bailiff, apparently. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent, thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. The victim in our case! Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived. So much so that he had brain damage and lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm, where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edward, though. Nick, are we going to take the whole file? There's too much! We'll never get it out! How about we just take what we think we'll need? Right, that's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now, all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court.